With the sparrings in the morning, usually, do you, do you have it where you just sort of have a couple of set people that you'll go with and just get a few rounds in with each? Or is um, it just sort of play it by ear on the actual session? It like, depends who turns up, lad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some days people don't turn up and it's fucking harder. You know what I mean? Like, that's been one of the, um, the fucking things this camp, to be honest, lad. Um, actually having sparring partners, lad. Because mm. as you know, when you spar, when you're fighting at the end of the year, a lot of people have already thought and that, you know what I mean? Like, that's probably one of the good things about being in one of them American super gyms. Mm. You've got all people to spar with, but you end up sparring with people that you end up fighting and that, you yeah. know what I mean? Just look at like Killcliff, like, Top ten welterweights as a bar. They will fight each other. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we have got Ian Gary and. Yeah. Luke I wouldn't. Hayden I wouldn't. Guys. We wouldn't fight anyone from me and lad. We're yeah. like a family in here. You know what I, mean? I think there's pro, there's pros and cons to everything, right? But I think those super gyms, it's like you do get the bodies, and that is the benefit. But then also you lose a lot of this, right? Yeah. You lose a lot of the atmosphere, the family sort of vibe. It's not the same, lad. No. You know what I mean? Like we really, I, it sounds stupid and that, but I always say it, we're like a family in here, lad. Mm. You know what I mean? All my training partners, like my brothers and sisters, I wouldn't. You I'm, feel that though when you come in. You just feel that, like as an outsider just walking into yeah. the gym, it feels completely different. You go to gyms that are a little bit more sanitised, a little bit bigger. It's just a whole different atmosphere. And if you're going in there every day, especially fighting, you want it to be comfortable. Do you yeah, know you I mean? do. You, want, you want it, to, as you say, you want to be comfortable. You want to feel like you're at home. And that's what we feel like in here. You know what I mean? I come in here and feel like I'm at home. You just said, you said at home. You just changed homes. How's that been? Stressful? Sad. Yeah, no, it hasn't been too bad. Could, could have been a lot more stressful. I reckon it's been all right. Um, Obviously, I didn't pick the best time, but yeah, no. if the mortgage would have got set, accepted earlier, we would have moved a couple of weeks earlier, but ended up fucking moving out three weeks before the fight Tony Ferguson and finding out my bird's pregnant with twins. So, I don't do things by halves. Firstly, I need to say congrats for that, because that's it. Twins, by the way, as well. Of course, that's just a very you move. Yeah, very like. me thing, man. <laughs> I do true. love a bargain, like. Yeah. Two for the price of one. Price. I, um... It's, it's been so crazy just with you the last sort of few months. How has it actually been just building up to this fight? Have you been in a good spot for it? Yeah, I have. You know what I mean? First half of the year was very tough, obviously. Having surgery, not being able to train, the controversy of me last fight and things I said before and after it. Obviously, the first couple of months of the year wasn't easy. First six months up until like I got me, me boot off and I got married and then I was able to get back in the gym and training, and then that, the past six months have been great. You know what I mean? Being back in here, as I say, with my family, being um, spending more time with my actual family and my friends and my wife, and uh, I just I can't wait to put on a show for everyone. You know what I mean? I haven't I haven't got much stress going into this fight, which is crazy to say, considering I've just moved house and fighting Tony Ferguson and the missus is pregnant with twins. But yeah, I'm going into this fight very calm, very relaxed in my mind and. I know what I'm going in to do. I said to, I said to you before that, first of all, when I saw you in Cage Rose, and this was just after your boot came off, you was in good shape, like you was in good shape. Like obviously it's well documented with sometimes you blow up and whatnot. But I say to a lot of people, right? Tell me if I'm wrong here. I, I think it's deceptive. I don't actually think you do blow up. Your cheeks just get puffy. My cheeks do Mate, go massive. You're never in bad shape. No, I never, I never have a big no, stomach. I don't think you know people I mean? get that. Your cheeks just go a bit puffy. My weight are with me, it does. It goes to my face bad. And then also, some of the pictures are photoshopped. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they photoshopped them quite smart. Yeah, in like they don't make them go like yeah. that. They just go and do it a little bit so it looks mm. realistic. You know what I mean? I said that as soon as, as soon as I saw you. I was like, he's in good shape. Yeah, that was, I think that was July. That was the weekend yeah, of Molly's yeah, it fight. Was July. And, um, Everyone was saying that to me, oh, you're looking shape, you're looking shape, because I was only about 85 kilo then, you know what yeah. I mean? Now I'm walking around about 78, 79. I said, I said to you though, which you smiled as if you didn't even realize it yourself, but throughout your whole career, cage warriors, going back to, mate, people don't realize you got in this game young to the fact you're lying about your age to get into pro shows. Like yeah. people sort of forget that a little bit about your career, but all your worst performances have always followed with your best performances? They have, like, you're not wrong. Can you feel that? Yeah, every time I've had a bad performance, after that, it's come back with a vengeance. And I think it's because I like shutting people up, I've proving people wrong. And that's that's my plan again, this one, you know what I mean? I've, I've been writ off and cast aside by a lot of people, you know what I mean? So it's going to be funny when I blast Tony Ferguson out of there fast and everyone's back on the bandwagon. I know I've heard Bispin, when he's, he fought Anderson Silva, he said that, 
He'd been watching him for so many years, obviously a legend of the game. It, he, when he went in to fight him, he sort of had to say in his mind, like, forget what he's done, forget who it is. Like, he's, he's enemy number one now. Have you got to do that with Tony or is it just sort of, you can take him how he is? No, yeah, I have. Because I've been watching him since, <laughs> for years. You know what I mean? I've been watching Tony Ferguson for years. He's top five lightweight of all time in his prime. He's got the, like the longest win streak ever at lightweight. And, He's a legend, lad. You know what I mean? I've got not, nothing but respect for him. But once that cage door closes, lad, and he's there in front of me, it's just another man that's in my way and my dreams and my goals and my family's well-being. So I've <laughs> I've got to finish him. Simple when you as. actually look at that matchup, for, for me, I think there's it can go a lot of different ways. But I think the biggest thing is just some of the athleticism that you bring to the table that I think sometimes is missed a little bit. Your front leg <laughs> comes up like a jab, almost is a, a jab. Your speed and quite how hard you hit. Do you think that's going to be the sort of main difference with someone like Tony? Yeah, I think the athleticism is going to play a big part because for years, Tony relied on his athleticism. Mm -hmm. That's what used to get him out of bad spots and he used to finish people because of his athleticism. Now he's lost that little bit of speed. He's lost that little bit of edge. and. You see it when he fights now, you know what I mean? He's not, he's not the same as he was. And athleticism plays a big part in that. I reckon the speed, the power, the eccentricity of that I bring to the mm. table is going to play a big part here. When you, have you got someone in mind particularly that you feel like you want to shout out on the mark afterwards? Or you no, just I don't shout anyone it? out, as you know. I don't mention it's any true. names. It's funny because a journalist said to Bobby Green on an interview yesterday, um, Paddy Pimler called you out, I never. On the Energize show, I said, um, after this fight, after I win this fight, it'd be nice to fight someone with a ranking such as Bobby Green, Renato Moicano, Grant Dawson. And I mean, I never called anyone out. I just said, one of them, we've got a ranking next to the name. And I said Bobby Green because he's the easiest fight with a number next to his name. You know what I mean? He's got good hands, yeah, but he gets submitted in five minutes. How do you think that fight with Jalen Turner goes? I think Jalen Turner beats him quite convincingly. You think he's just going to piece him up? Yeah. Short notice. Nice. Right. Pad, I really appreciate the man. You know that, Thank you very much.